nuclear energy. By the year 2000, indications are that half of our national power will come from nuclear energy. For all the potential danger in dealing with radioactive materials, our safety record is an admirable one. But industrial accidents, no matter how rare, will rise with the law of averages. And a radiation accident must be handled intelligently, without undue fear, by all personnel of the local hospital. But is the door always open to the radiation patient? Doctor, this man needs attention. I'm sorry, I realize he needs attention, but I cannot accept him in this hospital. He's a radiation An employee's patient. fear of contamination to himself, to, staff, to, to facilities, staff. to other patients, fear of financial loss. These are unfounded fears which must not be allowed to close the door. Would this happen in your hospital? You have to go in some place. I'm sorry. This man is in trouble. He has just been involved in a radiation accident. He needs care. In industry, radiation accidents occur in varying degrees of severity. Technologist Bob Cowan has received external radiation only. Though his own health may be in jeopardy, he presents no radiation hazard to attending medical personnel, a point to be remembered. External radiation accidents may occur in a number of ways. At an x-ray machine, for instance. Working a pig. transferring critical liquids and thus touching off a chain reaction. Or in Bob's case, an accident with a hot cell. To repeat, Bob presents no radiation hazard to the hospital which accepts him for emergency medical attention. This statement of fact dictates the sure and direct way in which Bob is handled. He should be considered just like any other person treated with x-rays, and he is, by the medical officer in charge. I understand you're exposed to some radiation. Yes, Dr. I'm going to give him a little echo now. He looks a little bit upset. This is our radiologist, Dr. Atkins. Dr. Atkins, this is the man we told you about, asked you to come in to see. Hi, uh, what source of radiation was this? This was a cobalt source. What was it being used for? Uh, we were irradiating food packages. I see. What position were you in relative to the source? I was about five or six feet away from it. Do you know about how many chest x-rays you've had in your lifetime? Oh, I'd say about uh, 10 or 12, Dr. A newcomer to the like staff that? and a symbol of the popular superstition that arises whenever the word radiation you enters the picture. All right, and there's no reason for you to worry. We're going to take good care of you. The doctor is aware that the superstition must be corrected immediately. There's no reason for you to be afraid or worried in caring for this patient. He's not radioactive. He's been exposed to an external source, but he isn't active himself. It's the same as though he were being treated by an ordinary diagnostic x-ray or... A Bob Cowan is being made comfortable. I'm sure the doctor will be in charge. He is not a reject, he is a patient. Everything possible is being done to let him know that he's a welcome patient. 
Thoughtful hands dry the perspiration on his forehead. They add the personal touch and help ease his tension. An emergency is met, and met well. Another accident. Fumes containing strontium-90 have been inhaled by a scientist. A case of internal contamination. An emergency shower taken at the site of the accident helps reduce his gross contamination in advance of the ambulance. Confining radioactive contamination and thus preventing its spread is done in the interest of good housekeeping. Not because Bill Carstairs presents a hazard to medical personnel. Bob, would you take that down to the laboratory and ask them to save it for us? Yes, Doctor. We're going to have to save all of his body waste. Okay. Mr. Carstairs, we're Upon going to his doctor's recommendation, swabs and body wastes are saved so that analysis can determine how much radioactivity is involved. Good morning, Mr. Carstairs. How are you today? Well, I guess all right. Now that he's followed up with a second shower, Bill is brought to his room and made comfortable. Handling him is a matter of routine, common sense, consideration. Meanwhile, the doctor thinks it's advisable to discuss Bill's case with the hospital administrator. Working with, uh, I think we probably should have somebody who knows more about this than we do. Look at him. Does he appear to have burns or other injuries? No, he seems perfectly all right, but he says he's inhaled this material. Then you are reasonably sure that radioactivity is involved? I'm sure it is, because he's worked with it for many years and seems to know what he's talking about. Then I have to agree with you. We should ask for assistance. I keep that map right handy. I should be able to find it. Yes, here it is. The administrator contacts the nearest office of the United States Atomic Energy Commission. Radiological assistance medical, please. It bears repeating. Bill Carstairs poses no risk to anyone around him. His case may be broadly compared, say, to various types of chemical poisoning all hospitals run across many times. Bill is receiving good care, very good care. Another emergency is met, and it is handled well. Trouble on a highway. There is no indication that any radioactivity has escaped from the truck's cargo as a result of the collision. But whenever the slightest doubt exists, the individual should be handled as a radiation accident case. When an alert is made from the accident site that a suspect radioactive victim is on the way, hospital personnel are prepared to handle the patient on arrival. If you have no radiation detection device on hand, Call your police department. They'll get you one fast. But do make sure you get one. The scene of the accident is also checked out. Of course, when trucks carry radioactive materials, safety regulations require that containers be sturdy enough to withstand the impact of a collision. And so, a highway accident rarely gives rise to a radiation hazard. Still, such a hazard can occur, and hospitalization is wise. The nurse is told the answer. Judy Keller is free of contamination. Even so, she remains a patient in the hospital where she is treated for shock and superficial wounds. Emergency handling, well done. A forklift accident and with it, contamination. Contamination must be confined, and the problem is dealt with simply enough by wrapping the patient in a blanket. The blanket should be saved, marked, and checked for radioactivity. With forklift operator Chris Martin, an immediate shower is ordered. Even though this is a small hospital, outside the metropolitan area, 
Its medical people know how to handle contaminated patients. In Chris's case, his handling amounts largely to a cleansing affair. The portable Geiger counter is used primarily for gross detection. Here again, if you have no counter, call the police. Commercially available detergents and soaps are best. Avoid highly alkaline soaps, abrasives, organic solvents and cleaners. Anything that could increase the permeability of the skin. Care should be taken not to open the skin or abrade it. The same care you would take in removing any foreign substance on the skin. Special attention should be given the areas where foreign materials tend to accumulate, the nostrils, around the eyes, scalp and ears, body folds, and fingernails. That's why it's called a cleansing affair. Okay, sir, you're fine now. Once contaminated material is pretty much washed away, the patient can be released. Same accident, same patient, but a different kind of contamination, quite different. Right forearm shows a severe open wound, speckled with particles that in all likelihood are radioactive. And the situation changes dramatically for the ambulance team. Despite the radiation hazard, they must perform first aid on the site, in full knowledge that a thorough shower awaits them the moment they get back to the hospital. Chris is medically described as a traumatic case. He's placed in reverse isolation, not because he presents a hazard to other patients, but to guard him against infections that could complicate his own illness. In addition, he's treated like a vermin-infested emergency case, whose body must be cleansed. Like vermin, radioactivity presents no serious hazard, but it must be dealt with. Washings are saved for analysis, then disposed of. Once again, good housekeeping. To further prevent spread of contamination, the wound is ready to be sealed off and the surrounding area cleaned. The cleaned area will then be taped off while the wound is irrigated. By primary wet debridement, crushed contaminated tissue must be removed. A more sophisticated wound counter, provided by a consultant, will determine the need for further treatment. Good afternoon, Mr. Martin. Hello. Do you get anything managed with your arm? I think so. Fine. Thank you. After secondary treatment, Chris is taken out of isolation and handled like any other patient. One point of difference. His urine is collected and saved for analysis. Chris will pull through. One thing is certain. The hospital staff know how effective they've been in reducing contamination, in providing first aid, in expressing no anxiety about contaminating themselves or anyone else in the hospital. They're a credit to their profession. How about some juice, Mr. Martin? Mm, thank you. Good emergency handling of the radioactive patient adds up to a relatively simple matter, a matter of simply being prepared. Let us review how. Uh, Mr. Cowan, uh, what happened? Try to establish as early as possible the kind of radiation accident you are handling and the extent of contamination. The alarm bells went off. How long were you there in the area before you got out? As soon as the alarm bells went off, I ran out, I'd say... Often the patient himself, a product of on-the-job training, is your richest source of information. 30,000 Curie uh, cobalt source. The same as with contagious diseases. Advise your personnel. Good nursing Tell them the kind of radiation accident they'll be dealing with. Act positively. Remember, radiation cases have parallels in routine hospital experiences. X-ray therapy, vermin infestations, chemical poisoning. Often you have no radiation problem at all. To find out where you stand, use a radiation detection device. Remember, life-saving first aid comes first. It must precede containment of radiation contamination. 
Familiarize yourself with the location of your nearest United States Atomic Energy Commission office. You can be in contact with a specialist in a matter of minutes. Prepare a set of standing orders that explain step by step how to handle an emergency radiation patient. Make them compulsory reading. Above all, remember, no radiation accident patient received in a hospital within the United States has ever given off enough radiation to expose attending medical and rescue squad personnel to an amount that even approaches the permissible dose for an industrial radiation worker. You are in the business of handling emergencies. You can deal with radioactivity by using the same common sense you'd apply to all your cases. Never let fear compromise good medicine.